This is Matt with Mel Express Radio. I have with yep. me Amon of Mike Night Demon. How are you today, man? I'm doing good. Overcast, chilly morning here in California. I don't know how it's, what it's like over there for you. Yeah, I'm located in Massachusetts, a little south of Boston. Uh, it's sunny, but a little bit of a breeze. I mean, anything above 40 degrees, we consider warm. So. <laughs> <laughs> right on. The band's new album, Year of the Demon, was released on March 25th. What can you tell fans about the latest release? Well, I'm really happy to get it all, all these songs together in one, mainly. You know, uh, the singles that came out in 2020, pretty limited as far as the copies that were released on 7-inch. And they all pulled out right away, you know, day they were released. So uh, there's a lot of people that weren't able to get those. But, you know, we had the, the original songs up on, you know, all the streaming platforms, but the B-sides were exclusive to the uh, seven inches. So it's cool to put it all together now for people that missed out on those. Or, you know, not everybody has a, a record player these days or, or even the time to, you know, I mean, I know it's a five-minute single or whatever, but, you know, put one on and you got to change it, the other one on. You know, you want to just rock the album in your car sometimes, right? You're in your tunes and just let it flow. So happy to do that finally and get it out of there with new artwork and put a new master on it and everything too. So just give the, you know, the fans a little, a little something extra. How did the band go about choosing which B-sides and singles to feature on the album? Uh, well, the singles, the original song, you know, when we, when we first started, you know, a lot, those were, I guess, you know, originally intended, you know, as part of a new album. But as time went on and we started writing more, we felt like each song, they kind of, you know, had their own identity and stuff. So we came up with the idea of just doing the singles through a release through the year. And so once we did that, we had kind of an idea to plan. As far as the covers go, you know, some of those we had kind of laying around that we had recorded, just kind of had kept on the back burner, like the Wasted Years track with uh, Leftover from the Live Darkness album. We've done that. That was the encore song that we did in Cleveland for that show, but did put it on the album. We decided to save it for something, you know, we didn't know for what. And also, you know, just dealing with the album was already like 90 minutes long anyway, that live album. So I was like, all right, I think we can leave this off. Maybe save it for something special in the future. It was a perfect time to do it, I think. Put it on the singles. And uh, the other ones, you know, like Fast Bikes and Sun Goes Down, those were kind of those were songs that were floating around for a while uh, that we've talked about recording or covering at some point or another. So when uh, this idea came up, it was like, all right, well, let's lay these down and perfect uh, place to put it. And then, of course, the the Entrance single, you know, those are the two songs that we got to perform with Willie John Roth, which was, you know, an amazing experience. Having that on, on recording was really, really special for us. So we thought that it would be really cool to uh, put that out there for the fans. So, yeah. What kind of feedback have you received since the album release? Uh, it's been really good, you know. We, uh, we cracked the top 30 in Germany, which is pretty awesome. It's like the only place in the world where heavy metal is still the top 40, you know, uh, charts. But, no, everybody's really happy and stuff that we, we put it all together. You know, like I said, a lot of a lot of fans weren't able to get their hands on those seven inches. And, uh, nice to have it all in one package and yeah it's been really good so far it's you know it's it's new for a lot of people too you know i mean there's it's a whole new audience that we're still trying to, to reach that had no idea about the singles in the first place so it's another way to get out there and get some new fans how was it working with tim baker on the song 100 miles per hour yeah that was great you know tim those guys are like our it's we work closely with them, you know, on everything. I, I record their records. I do all the recordings for them. You know, Jarvis plays bass in the band. You know, we tour together. We do play shows together. We share practice space. You know, so it was just a, it was a no-brainer when we decided to do that. You know, again, that's another one of those songs I would mention earlier. But, you know, it was a, there was always talk of, man, we should try to do an almost song at some point. But, you know, it's like, what song? You know, what, what, it's hard to pick a song, but that one just kind of spoke to us right away. It was like, man, this is, there's one song that we like almost written for Night Demon. It would be that song. So, you know, we asked him and of course he's, he said yes right away. It was just really cool. He just came in and laid it down, you know, a couple takes, no big deal, like he always does. 
as you can imagine, that voice, you know, is such an awesome character. It's a really cool sound, and it just comes out of him so naturally. It's really cool to uh, to hear that coming out of out of the speakers, you know, raw. But it's a real talent. What do you see as far as plans for the band for the rest of the year? Uh, a lot of touring. Finally, you know, we're finally getting back out on the road. You know, all these plans have been have been sidelined. You know, a couple of times over the past couple of years, pandemic and everything. So we're hitting the road here in May with Midnight in Europe, and then uh, we'll be doing some festivals over the summer, and then we're getting gearing up for another full length, which is actually the proper new record that will be coming out in November. So you know, of course, we'll be we're planning to hit the states. You know, everybody in the states will be bugging us about when we're going to head out, do some shows, get over to the East Coast, make up all the lost time. But we have plans to do that fall. So. Keep an eye out for that. We are announcing that kind of stuff pretty shortly here. So yeah, just get out there and hit it, you know, make it up for this lost time. Is it too soon to talk about if you'll be headlining or supporting or who you'll be touring with? Yes, there's some ideas. I can't really mention it yet because it's nothing's it's not really solidified yet at this point, but I'll tell you one thing, it's gonna be a killer package. So I think uh, you know, people are saying you gotta bring that midnight night team and thing to the states and I can pretty much guarantee that's going to happen so there's a little snippet of that if you ever could put together a tour for the band whether it would be headlining or supporting who would you want to take out and why I mean I would think the dream would be to go out with Metallica maybe Metallica Megadeth and Night Team how about that that'd be a good one that would and then uh, as far as what we're going to be able to do you know it's cool to you know, doing the thing with Midnight is really cool because they're both three piece fans and uh, it just makes sense. It's really cool. So I think I'd, I'd like to do something with all the all the killer three, three piece bands that are out there these days. Like, probably do, do something with Bewitcher Midnight, maybe Exciter. That'd be a pretty cool package, right? Yeah, for sure. Is there anything that we haven't covered that you'd like to throw in? Uh, I think that's about it, man. Just so uh, we got a, well, unfortunately, this is cool for California people, but we're doing a beer collaboration with the local brewery here. Uh, do the beer of the demon. And we'll be doing this show here in a couple of weeks. It'll be our first California show, hometown show in like three years. So we're really excited about that. That's coming up. So if anybody feels like flying out to California for a weekend, do it uh, the weekend of April 16th. It's going to be a really, really good time. Uh, but yeah, I think that's about it, man. Now, Beer of the Demon, how high proof is that? <laughs> All right. It's actually not too bad. We, we try to keep it kind of mellow because, you know, we know how our, uh, our fans like to drink, and it's not just like have one one beer at a time. You know, we like to keep it going through the day. So it's going to be like an English kind of dark ale. So it'll be like 4% or something like that. So you throw back a six-pack of that and still know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff, man. Now, my last question I have for you, what is one album by Night Demon that you would recommend to a new fan and why? Live Darkness. Basically, pretty much every song in the catalog is on that album, besides, I think, maybe one or two that didn't make it on there. And it's the definitive collection of songs. It's one, you know, the EP and the first record, you know, have different members of the band that are no longer in the band. So, but the the way that we perform those songs on Live Darkness is like me. It's like that's what I just tell people to listen to the live album because that's it. It's all, you know, it's the current lineup and a lot of those older songs, you know, if you listen to the original recordings and then the live version, it's like, you know, we just, there's just like a different kind of energy and fury on those live versions. So that's, yeah, that's what I would say. Live Darkness. Awesome, man. It's been great talking to you. Uh, Looking forward to see what the year brings for the band, and I hope out on tour you guys stay safe and healthy. Thanks, man. We'll see you uh, hopefully in the fall, man.